Exercise 2. In this exercise, we use Rhino and learn how to create a surface loft. In this case, uh, we have kind of a freeform flashlight, you might say, that uh, came up with for design. And so you have the freedom to do whatever you like as far as this. But using the techniques here, you could pretty much make whatever you like as far as this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start sketching here on the top. Actually, on the right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to take the curve tool, which is curved interpolated points, line up here, and I'm only going to be one square away. And I'm going to go ahead and make like a little bump here. And this is going to be a imprint. And I'm going to do that. Let me just do that one more time. And I'll end it right about there. Right click. And then I could go ahead and sketch on the top here an arc. Again, approximately one inch there. And the pattern that, there's actually a pattern tool. You have the ability to click over here on translate and there's polar array and what you can do with the polar array is you could select the geometry in this case I'll select it from the front you see how it highlights it at the top and then right click click on the point where it's going to rotate around and then the number of entities that you want I'll just leave it at four and then you can set it to 360 degrees if you hit eight, enter you'll get several of them, you'll get four of them all around an array. Now we don't need all those, but I just wanted to show that to you. And the one on the top, um, you could take that or leave it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually use that one. Okay, and then from here now, let's zoom up to this perspective view, and I'll maximize it by double clicking on the perspective box. And now we go to Surface, Loft. And you can start at the bottom here, clicking on the front edges in sequence as they go around in a clockwise fashion. Right click, click on Close Loft, and hit Preview. You should see that it's taking shape. And then you could go ahead and uh, hit OK. And if we shade this, you see we've made it kind of, uh, this is supposed to be like an ergonomic flashlight. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and double click on perspective so I can see the front and back. I'm going to put in some other shapes here. So um, we could go with like a circle in the center and drag that out to match the edges. And just go to Solids Tools and Extrude. Select the circle, in this case, the curve. Enter. Then you can extend that out. I have it extended in both directions. I'll make it a 0.25. Click. Okay, so that's where the lens would go. We could add a blend on there. So if we go to the solid and find fillet, fillet edge, and leave it at 0.2. Click on the edge and then right click two times. And then to patch the back side, let's flip it around here. We could use another tool, which is under Surface, and there's Patch. You just select the edge, hit Enter, and hit Preview to see what it's coming out as. And right now it's aligned to Tangent. Uh, stiffness I'm going to set to zero, and Preview it again. And you can see you get different adjustments. So if you want a concave or convex, you can apply that. And you can adjust these uh, surface UV parameters. So if I simplify it, let's see what happens if I set it to one and one. Okay. I like that. That's nice and smooth. The transition looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to set this to stiffness to two. Maybe actually five. Nope. 
looks like three is probably the spot I want there. And go ahead and hit OK. All right, at this point, you could go ahead and start adding different colors and such to it. So, for example, um, if you were to click on this little button here and go to this red dot and then select geometry and enter, over on the right, you'll see there's options for materials. You could download a product they have. Uh, for full rendering, but uh, we'll go with the basic rendering here. We'll go with the color, and I'm going to make that, actually I'll go with white. Apply. Actually it is white, I guess. Uh, let's try that again. Let's go with a blue. If you render it, should be able to see this. Okay, let's go over here to the uh, color wheel. Select the model, and if we go to basic, should be able to. Oh, here we go. Object. That's what we wanted. And when you render, you do see a rendering of it here. You could also change the display color here too. That's from the, in the view area. Notice it doesn't necessarily carry over, carry over to the rendering though. That's the other option I was showing you in the red. So for example, if we go ahead and click on the color wheel, get to this little icon right here. We could click on the entity, hit enter. And actually, oh, I had the wrong thing. I had gloss color on. Let's go with white on that. Actual color, switch it to blue here. Okay, you could set the glossy finish up. So if you want to set that to maybe 20, it'll look glossy or transparency, you could make it like glass. Hit enter. And then we'll take the front, select the front. Go to basic, color. I'm just going to go with white on that one. And I'll put a gloss finish on it as well, about 30, the lens. And now, if you render that, click on the render button, it should appear over here. You can see the different colors and such. And that completes exercise two.